Hi everyone, welcome to my channel where I talk about movies, uh, including recent Blu-ray releases here in 2023. So today I want to talk about a recent release from Co Cohen Film Collection, and this is Up, Down, Fragile, a 1995 movie directed by Jacques Rivette. And uh, it's touted as sort of a musical. Now, if you, if you are familiar with Jacques Rivette uh, movies, you might wonder, a musical? <laughs> Uh, but uh, we'll get to that because uh, it, it, in Rivette's films, it's basically a mixture of genre, uh, but it's always sort of on the on the edges. It's not really a genre movie. There's crime involved in his films, and there's mysteries involved. Um, and here we're going to get music. We are indeed. It takes a while, but we are indeed going to get to uh, some musical numbers, Rivette style. Now, this is a movie about. Uh, three young women in Paris. Uh, one is played by Natalie Richard. This is Nino, uh, and she has been involved in a life of, of crime, not in Paris. Uh, uh, evidently, a, uh, she's been a prostitute. Uh, there's a violent crime committed in which she is implicated, so she flees to Paris uh, to, to escape her past. And then the second character, Louise, played by Marianne Dentoncourt. She's very wealthy. Uh, she has just uh, emerged from a coma. She'd been in an accident. She was in a coma for five years. Can't say she looks any the worse for wear, <laughs> uh, but uh, she is uh, one of the red herrings in the film, I suppose you would call it, is a pass for her father, a family, a family uh, uh, crime that she knew nothing about. Now, when she comes to Paris from the hospital in, the, in, uh, in another city, comes back to Paris, uh, she doesn't reconnect with her father except through the telephone. And she's learned that her aunt has, has passed away and has left her a house, a house in Paris. And boy, it's a, it's a humdinger of a house, as often they are in Jacques Rivette's movies. Third character played by Florence Cote, playing Ida. Now, she's an orphan. She's all alone in the world. Uh, and she's obsessed with finding her actual mother, her birth mother. But she has no idea how to do that except through a song. A song that she believes her mother sang to her when she was a child, maybe even in the womb. Uh, she only knows the music. She needs to find the lyrics. Um, so part of the mystery of this is who is, who is Ida's mother and is Ida going to be able to find the mother, her, her, her birth mother? Um, but in essence, uh, Rivette is very much an existentialist in the sense that he believes in that we need to shed the past, that the past, uh, our lives are about moving forward, about inventing one's, one's life. Um, as often in Rivette's films, there is a very uh, overlap, very much of an overlap between theater and real life, um, a sense that a, a performance uh, the uh, uh, artificial performance versus real life performancing, a, a playfulness. There's, there's almost always this sense of playfulness in, in Rivette's films that is that can be very addictive. So even though the films are long, this one's two hours and 50 minutes, I never feel the length of it. Uh, and you know, all, all kinds of cinematic references in, in the film. Here we get a, the most obvious one will be to uh, Vertigo and the idea of of uh, healing one's, um, uh, healing one's uh, trauma or he healing one's fears uh, through, through a traumatic event. So the, well, th three of these actresses uh, collaborated with Rivette as he, is, as he often did in his movies. So they actually created the characters, their, their own characters, and, and, and created a sort of a storyline, a scenario. And then Rivette and his two, uh, two of his screenwriters that he worked with throughout his career, they would write the dialogue. So in, in this kind of uh, sort of freeform cinema, you really have to rely on the charisma of the actors. And, and these, act, these actors are <laughs> extraordinary as far as charisma. You can't take your eyes off them. Uh, you want to know what's going to happen to them, even though nothing much really is happening in the, in the films. Rivette has a very strange uh, there's a very strange quality to his films because it looks like real life and then it really isn't. <laughs> it is something else. Um, and we also get Paris in the summertime. Uh, in, 
20 years earlier, Rivette's films, uh, film Celine and Julie Go Boating, certainly one of his greatest films, also set in Paris in the summertime, also, also involving a very close collaboration with the two actors, in, uh, the main actors in that film. So we get, we get Paris, we get the parks, we get the street scenes, we get the beautiful neighborhoods with the, 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 uh, the house that, um, uh, that Louise inherits from her aunt. It's just filled with just marvelous uh, uh, artifacts, bric-a-brac and, and, and gardens outside, even though we're in, in Paris. Um, and we get a couple of great scenes in the Library of Decorative Arts. And boy, this is, this is something I would certainly like to go see. I, I would imagine that set designers, and there is a set designer in this film, the main male character, they, 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 uh, they, they could do a lot of research in, in this library uh, where Lawrence Cote is a librarian. And then we get an atelier. Uh, this is where, uh, like a big warehouse where the sets are, are designed for, uh, uh, for for uh, play, uh, theater or for movies, and in fact, we're looking at some of the uh, leftovers from uh, Jacquevitz's previous film on Joan of Arc. Uh, so we we get some of the scenic designs and things off in the corner. Uh, and there's a couple really great scenes uh, set in this warehouse, including a dance scene. So eventually, about an hour into the movie, we, we start to see dancing. We've seen a little bit of dancing in a nightclub. Uh, Natalie Richard and Mary Ann Denencourt were, were trained dancers. They weren't, I don't believe either were professional dancers, but they certainly, they certainly do dance, and, and there's a good bit of singing. And previous to that, we, we've had scenes in a nightclub, and we, we are, we're, uh, a couple of jazz bands play with uh, singers, Anna Corinna. Is, is in the film as, as a singer uh, and also get, is involved with the, uh, the plot as the film goes along. And then there's another singer I really liked uh, called Enzo Enzo. She wasn't identified in the commentary, uh, but I did look her up. I did some research and I believe she's still with us and a very successful, popular uh, French singer, uh, songwriter. So again, we get, um, we get Anna Karina, uh, to remind us of the new wave, Jacques Rivette is one of the founding members. I mean, it was an actual institution, but along with uh, uh, Claude Chabrol and Eric Romer, Jean-Luc Godard, Francois Truffaut, probably the big, uh, the big five of, of uh, the French new wave, um, Rivette himself has a cameo in, in this film. I didn't recognize him when I watched it. I didn't have to rely on the commentary for that because he, and it's at a hot dog stand, and, and uh, Lawrence Cote, the, the woman who's the, the young woman who's trying to find out who she really is, she's always being recognized. And a man comes up at the hot dog stand and says, "I remember you. Where do I know you from?" And <laughs> and Rebed is like, you know, perplexed. He can't figure it out. And he's very, he's he's very struck by that. And of course, all three of these act, actors. Um, who play the main three characters, they have appeared before in, in Jacques Rivette films, so he knows who they are. <laughs> There's always a little bit of, of uh, jokiness within all these kind of themes and these kind of uh, uh, references. So, uh, so Rivette in, in interviews said that uh, Give a Girl a Break was the main inspiration for this movie. Now, Give a Girl, Girl a Break was a Stanley Donen musical from the 1950s. And it was, uh, I haven't seen it in so long, I could barely remember it. It starred uh, Marge and Gower Champion and Debbie Reynolds, Bob Fosse. Uh, but it had a similar storyline of, um, of, of three women whose lives intersect, which is what happens in, this, in, in Up, Down, Fragile. The, these three characters gradually intersect, mostly Nina and Louise. Um, Ida, the, the character searching for her wife, for her, her mother, uh, uh, she's sort of out. She does intersect in a couple of very crucial scenes, uh, but she's basically alone. She's, she's, she's a sidelight story to it, but a very important part of this. Um, so this is a movie with a very much the new wave feel. Rivette never really lost that feel of it. Now, he made, he made movies that were very uh, challenging and his career developed thematically in his, his range. Uh, but 
I think the new wave feel of, of the early films from those five directors that I, that I named, Rivette really uh, uh, stayed the closest to the spirit, shooting in uh, real life locations. Uh, uh, a love of Hollywood, uh, extreme love of Hollywood, <laughs> uh, but not duplicating Hollywood. Uh, Rivette is making a musical, there's dancing, and I found the dancing delightful, expressive. Uh, uh, but he's, he's searching for new forms. He doesn't want to duplicate Hollywood. Hollywood, he loved it. He was the most cinephiliac of all the French New Wave directors. He just was immersed in movies, saw movie, Hollywood movies over and over and over again. He was immersed in the theater. He was a man of culture. Uh, but he wanted his movies to be more open-ended. They're the kind of movies that you can feel a part of. I think that why they're so attractive to a lot of people is because you almost feel like you're part of this 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 uh, scenario, this, this film that's going on. Um, and uh, <clears throat> now, and, and Rivette uh, was was a, a filmmaker that did not get the attention that the other uh, French New Wave directors attain. Godard may have not had much of an audience in his post-1960s, but he was a critical darling, Truffaut and Romer. Romer was, was a, the other one who, was, who very much, I think, adhered to the spirit of the New Wave. Uh, he also collaborated with his actors very much, in, um, and although he loved Hitchcock and uh, the Fritz Lang, and uh, you know, he, he made films that uh, nevertheless, he too explored new new forms. Truffaut was much more of a commercial filmmaker, as was Chabrol. Chabrol had uh, you know a long career with much success. Now, that is a discovery for me, uh, and uh, I had only seen a couple of his films until until this year. There's a Richard Pena commentary. Now. Uh, Up Down Fragile is the fourth in a series of uh, monthly releases and evidently and quite sadly the, the, the last of, of these four Jacques Rivette releases from later in his career. Richard Pena did a commentary on all four, it's the only supplement, and as with the other three, it's all, all his, his uh, useful information is sort of uh, in the first 30 minutes of it. So you really don't have, after that, he sort of just describes the scenes as they go along. Yeah, kind of disappointing commentary, I mean, and it, it is a daunting task to, to provide commentaries for uh, two hour and 50 minutes, three hour movies. Um, now, again, I, as, as I said, Up Down Fragile is the fourth of the movies that Cohen released. Uh, the Gang of Four, I think, was their first release. A couple of the actors are in this film that are in Up Down Fragile. Love on the Ground, that's with uh, Geraldine Chaplin, Jane Birkin, and Sandra Bonaire, an absolutely amazing performance in Secret Defense. Uh, really a revelation for me. Uh, the Rivette uh, discovering these later films of, of, of Rivette uh, has been, um, it, it's, it's probably the most uh, satisfying experience I've had so far in, in, the, in the new new releases of 2023. I'm probably by myself in that, in that, in that, uh, in that regard. My, the, my, uh, the views on my Rivette films don't, uh, are, are, uh, are kind of disappointing, but to be expected, Rivette's definitely not a commercial filmmaker that's going to appeal to a large audience. But if you've never seen a Rivet film, this Criterion release of Celine and Julie Go Boating, uh, this is the one that I think uh, definitely to start off with. Okay, thanks a lot for everybody who managed to listen. I do appreciate it. Comments are always welcome. Take care.